Well, welcome to also my inaugural lecture. I'm happy to be here. And it's, of course, quite a challenge to give an inaugural lecture within just 10 minutes. So let's start. I took some few notes. Uh, my title is Just Visions. I thought the title should not be longer than the presentation. Um, I should possibly start at the beginning, at the here and now possibly. My name is Andreas Pfennig, which is written here. I'm part of the uh, Department of Chemical Engineering, uh, especially the group Products, Environment and Processes. Uh, and my past to also tell something about that. Uh, I've been professor at RWTH Aachen for more than 15 years. They moved to Austria to the Technical University of Graz and then roughly two years ago came to this university, to my university, now Liège. My expertise is in the area of solvent extraction, reactive extraction, phase separation, which is of course nice to talk about, but I realize that most of you have totally other backgrounds, so that may not be so, so much of interest. In case you are interested in these topics, I have prepared a supplement to this inaugural lecture, which is available on YouTube. If you, if you just enter my name and inaugural, you will find the video there, 35 minutes. It's hopefully sufficient to explain all the details of my research, my visions that I have in, in some sort of detail. But nevertheless, I would like, to, of course, to give you some ideas of what I'm doing also here, so I can focus you on some of these aspects. Uh, one thing I have been working on quite extensively in the past with a number of, of projects with industry and other universities is uh, sort of oriented around bio-based bio chemistry. As you know, we would like to get rid of fossil resources and would like to substitute them with some renewable resources. And one way to do that is to use biomass to produce all those things we need for living, like the plastics, like the detergents, like the pharmaceuticals, produce them from biomass. One way to do that, in turn, is to use biotechnological steps. So you have a fermentation, and actually the, the reactions that go on are being done by the microbes, which means you have a big pot with water, microbes in there, nutrients in there, some biomass in there, and then over time the products evolve. And now you want to get them out of this big pot of water, and what can you do? You can extract that by adding some organic solvent, some oily phase, which is selected such that it directly picks out selectively that component you want to get out of there. That's, so to speak, where I come in. That's one of the separation things that we are doing. Um, well, and this is the simple part. And then starts actually the complicated part, and I called it source vinaigrette problem. Some of you know that already, I guess. Um, how do you produce a nice salad sauce? You have a salad, you want to have a salad sauce, what do you do? You take vinegar, you take oil, you shake it, possibly also some spices and herbs, and, but it phase separates directly, phase separation, one of my topics. It's much too fast if you pour that over the salad, the vinegar will be at the bottom, the oil will be somewhere on the top, but not really nice taste, and not, not nice uh, salad sauce. So what do you do? You add a tablespoon of mustard, right? Mustard is finely ground uh, mustard seeds, so fine solid particles, and solid particles have the tendency to attach to the interface and that way stabilize the interface between the aqueous and the organic phase. That is, you shake now, after you added the mustard, your salad sauce, and you will get this nice, greasy, uh, sticky salad sauce, which you add, you to pour on the salad, and that way, really, you have a really perfect salad sauce. Exactly that, unfortunately, happens in our extraction process. There, we don't want to have that, apparently, right? It's, it's a, determ it's a deterior deterioration of our system. So we... Nevertheless, look at the little droplets and the particles, how they attach, how they interact, and look at that scientifically, and from that, so to speak, deduce methods how to avoid the source vinaigrette in our technical processes. Okay, so that's one topic. Another topic is urban mining. Also a hot topic, looking ahead of time a little bit. All your old mobile phones and computers, you throw them away, but they contain lots of very valuable components. Metals, precious metals, rare earth metals. You want to, get, uh, you want to recover them. You finally grind your, uh, your solids, your mobile phones. You um, 
you leach that with a strong acid, so you have again an aqueous phase with your valuable components in there. What do you do? Well, you extract. You add an organic phase designed such that it picks out selectively those components that you want to get out of there to, for further processing that. That's not a problem, again. But you have solids in there, you have two phases. What do the solids do? Like they always do, if you don't take care properly, they stick to the interface, they stabilize your source vinaigrette in the technical process. And of course now the expertise, same expertise as before, but a new physical system, not new material system, so you have to readjust all the parameters, and that way you are able to overcome this problem as well. Quite recently we started, a, well, we are about to start a pro, uh, project on phosphorus recovery from sewage sludge together with Angelique Leonard and water companies all over Europe and universities all over Europe. And it's not yet 10 minutes. <laughs> it was just checking. Uh, <laughs> okay, so um, what do we have? We have, well, you know how that works. It's an important topic as well. With the food, you take in all your nut the nutrients from the food, you leave lots of them in the sink, they wind up in the sewage sludge in the end, and you want to recover them from there, especially the phosphorus. What do you do? You leach that with a strong acid. It's all in there. What do you do? You extract it. You add, an ex uh, again, an organic solvent, designed such that it sele selectively put pulls out those components that you want to have. And what happens? You have two phases, organic and aqueous, and the sewage sludge is particles. Again, they are nasty. They stick to the interface. They stabilize your emulsion if you don't take care. Again, our same procedure as every year, more or less. What do I want to tell you is that? Not necessarily that I'm an expert in source vinaigrette. Not that. But apparently, what I wanted to tell you is that actually projects always go for phosphorus, bio-based, materials or biomass, a starting material, other products or uh, feedstock, raw material classes, so to speak. That's the vertical structure, so to speak, for which we get our money. Our work, actually, we are doing horizontally. You are always the same method, but for all the different products and raw materials. And that's actually one of the essential things in chemical engineering. We are applying all the same methods for very different things. And my vision in context to that is actually that the structure of the university will allow us to flourish in this horizontal way, so to speak, in the future. But of course, we are also doing actually other things, not as I said, just source vinaigrette. We are also doing, looking at the droplets for extraction equipment, really designing the equipment, again, looking at what the droplets doing, and that's actually the bread and butter, butter uh, topic that we are looking at designing these things and building tools to do, to do that. But we are also doing other things, also looking ahead a little bit of time, um, devising scenarios of the future because we want to stand, understand what are the challenges, how do we need to adjust chemical engineering so as to cope with the challenges ahead. Uh, for that we are using balances no balances from your bank account, something coming in, something going out, the rest, rest remains or not. Balances are quite accurate and so are the balances if you, for example, look for fossil resources that you dig from the ground, that you burn, that you emit into the atmosphere as CO2, that lead to the climate change. And so you can ask the question, what do we need to do to limit the climate change? It's one thing. We can also do the same thing with land, area and food. Again, I can't tell you all the details about that. It can be managed, it's a challenging task, but I worked out already also on that quite some time ago, some videos that you find on YouTube, whole seminar series, so to speak, and actually also the, question to, uh, the answer to the question, what do we need to do to master the challenges ahead in, in that respect? Finally, I would like to uh, announce, so to speak, uh, uh, a presentation I will presumably be giving, I hope that date will be realistic, on the 12th of December, this building, room R52. It was a side thought, so to speak, of the research I was doing, uh, starting on a molecular level, so very small. We are also looking at molecules, how they pass across the interface between the two phases, because that's what's of interest to us. And from that we learned that actually these very small scales are linked to the very large scales. Large scales, not necessarily extraction columns, but light years. So really big things. 
and uh, that's a little getting a little bit philosophical and presumably on the 12th of December, room R52, I will be giving a presentation to which you, all of you are invited, the atom, the universe and the conscious self, a little bit philosophical as I said. With that, I'm at the end of my inaugural mini lecture. Um, if you should have questions, I'm around for the rest of the evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>